Um, on Friday, it was reported that a 12-year-old boy returned to his school after the summer break as a girl. Uh, the boy attended school in a dress with pigtails and is said to be preparing to undergo hormone treatment and surgery, making him the youngest ever sex swap patient, allegedly. Yesterday, it was revealed that another boy had turned up at his school as a girl, this time aged nine. The child wore a female uniform with hair tied in pink ribbons, and the classmates were told that the boy had left school and been replaced by a girl. Well, with us now, one person who knows only too well what these children and their families are going through. Uh, seven years ago, 21-year-old uh, James Harris underwent sex reassignment surgery to transform himself into Lauren. And Lauren joins us now along with psychologist Dr. Kenneth Dembski. And welcome both. Thank you. Thank welcome. you for coming in. Now, obviously, a lot of people will immediately be thinking, where do I know her from? Where do I know her from? But, of course, in the, in the late 1980s, you went on the, on the Wogan show, you're a very precocious child, knew your antiques. And uh, and you had you know this mass of of, of, of curly hair and your Long bow ties. Hair, yes. <laughs> um, so that's the person that we knew. And and you were saying before we started here that uh, that being famous at that time, and you were very very famous. You know, was Still a great very very famous. Yes, was a great uh, a great distraction um, and a distraction from from school, a distraction I suppose from life because. No, you said that you knew right from the word go that you were trapped in the wrong body. Yes, I, I would definitely say it was, my outlet was television instead of going to school. And yes, I knew I was a, it's what you call a woman trapped in a boy's body. Mm. But um, it, it was very quick, very quick, because I was so busy on Oprah and going on television yeah. that I, I bottled it up until one day I, I, I couldn't bottle it up anymore. But you had enormous support from your family, didn't you? Yes, and I, I'd like to say thank you to my family from the bottom of my heart because they are the most wonderful, loving family you could possibly ever ask for. And there's so many people in my situation whose families leave them, disown them, throw them out. And, uh, and I just want to say a really big thank you to my family and my father, who, who I compl sometimes I nag a bit, but uh, I love you all. Mm. Um, what, what was the process like for you? So, I mean, you, kind of, you had your final operation in 2001, didn't you? The final That's right. transformation. Yes. And so the lead up to that, what sort of process do you go through from kind of saying, right, I feel like I am a woman trapped in a boy's body, and then sort of how does it work from there? Well, first of all, you know you're a woman trapped in a boy's body, otherwise you wouldn't go for it at right. all. And then you have to see psychologists and counsellors. But the thing is, um, most of all, it, on the NHS, it's t it's, it takes too long. So I had to pay for that. And I had numerous operations to make me who I am today. And, and also mentally put under an enormous amount of stress and, um, and pressure. I mean, you did have two, thank goodness, failed suicide attempts. Yes, I did. I did, yes. Because uh, you must understand, but I'm sure you agree, that you, you feel as if you can't live with, with the body you're in. So it's either get the scissors, which is how people feel, mm. uh, or, or, or just die, basically. Uh, and you, you have to, you, you feel very impatient. All you want to do is to have this operation. And the problem is, that's not good, because you have to be patient, because in the end of the day, you do have it done. And then you have to live with those circumstances, too, because life isn't easy either way. Um, Dr. Dempsey, I mean, over the weekend when we read these reports, I mean, obviously you had the first story and then the second story came out. For us, it might have been quite surprising, but for you, this is nothing new at all. Well, I've been working with the trans people and their families for... Um, Excuse me one moment, but I don't like the term trans people. I, I, mean, I don't even like the word anything to do with trans people. I think it's basically either a woman or, well, just, just, just trans people just doesn't go for me. It's difficult to, it's di it, for us. It is difficult it's because, for you. Because human but beings you see, need... Why do, why do we need to label people? Well, there has to be a description, otherwise we wouldn't know who we were well, talking about. Uh, people are people, human beings. So how would, you, how would, so how would we uh, say here that... Well, that then, let's say, well, uh, trans, uh, tr um, trans women, then. It's better than saying trans people. Well, I mean, we could get caught up on this sort of Well, you see, basically, it's words like that that people get mixed up. It's prejudice. I mean, I was only in a marketplace just not long ago, and uh, they said, oh, that's that drag queen. Mm. You know, and then what we're doing with, this art, with the story is we're focusing on the little girl here. Mm. And, you know, if people call people trans people, then they're going to say, you're a tran, you are, you're mm. a tran. That's not nice. Well, let's... We've got for to the, think of a purposes, new word. For the purposes of... Yes, of course. Of I understand that. But interviewing our... 
eminent doctor here. Yes. Um, uh, and respectfully, we must uh, we, we must do that. Um, so so when when it comes as as we were saying then when you when you uh, when you uh, discover that there is a person who is tr trapped in the wrong body, mm. um, as Holly said, this is not something that's new, but perhaps nowadays we're just a little more sensational about it. Well, um, I think where the general public is be is, has had its awareness raised to a great degree um, that there are many gender variant people um, across the spectrum um, and that they've always been part of the of human population and people are now uh, feeling empowered to um, realize themselves to fulfill their potential rather than suffer greatly in silence or to lead greatly unfulfilled lives mm. um, in roles assigned to them at birth that sometimes didn't fit at all. So what happens to these two boys now who, who, who want to be girls? Um, their families would appear also, as, as, as your, mm -hmm. yours did, are hugely supportive. Mm -hmm. um, they're at school, which can be a very, very cruel place. Mm -hmm. And as they, uh, and, and, and kids have an excuse because they're kids. But as they go, exactly. grow older, exactly. uh, adults don't have any excuse and they will grow up with, with this prejudice. Well, I think um, people sometimes focus on um, transition and focus on how difficult that is. But I think what they're underestimating is how difficult it is to be a person for whom transition would be right pre-transition. Um, I agree. I think that's what, what we're trying to say is it's the, it, it, some people think that they are a, a boy trapped in a woman's, a, bo a woman trapped in a boy's body. You get so confused. But, uh, but you, they have to, you have to make sure that the person's right for it mentally, mm. physically, um, because it, it's, a, it's a big upheaval. But there's an argument, isn't there, where they're saying that, um, I mean, in Britain at the moment, you can't have this operation or this hormone treatment until you're 16? 16, that's 16. right. And I, I think that this little girl should have the, the transition now so she can get familiar with being a woman. And that's also because there's some irreversible, as you go through puberty, there's things like your muscles right. get bigger, you get more yes. muscular. And shape also you and get very emotional. Right. And I also think that she should have a hormone test to see what levels they are. And I also think they should have a book saying, talking about transsexuals, as, as, uh, like a medical book. Because my GP doesn't have a clue, and, I, and, and not many doctors do, I'm sure you do. But if you go to Smith's or you go to a shop and you say, I want a book on transsexuals, mm. what happens when it happens? What are the hormones like? Well, you should write it. I should. You should. They um, don't have one. The, 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 in your opinion, uh, at what point should a child begin to undergo that sort of hormone treatment, something that may perhaps in the future be reversible? Well, I think uh, that probably the, the Dutch have a, a good model, um, and it's used widely in the States. Um, and it's in quite sharp distinction to the UK model, so it's worth mentioning, I think. Um, there are five stages of puberty, um, and the first two um, are largely insignificant. The big changes come in the last three. Um, now, in the UK, there's a rather harsh requirement that a child complete all five stages of puberty before that person's gender dysphoria is taken really seriously. Mm. Uh, and so the person has to go through many irreversible changes um, before they're allowed to say, you know, this, this is not my gender, truly. Um, in Holland and many places in the States where I come from, um, it's after the first two stages when uh, there are minimal um, uh, skeletal, muscular, vocal changes that have to be then worked against in transition. We uh, unfortunately we you know we're, we only just get into these things and we yeah. have to uh, we have to finish. Um, and there's uh, just one thing I wanted to say. Um, in I've in got, ten seconds. Yes, in ten seconds. I've got a show coming up called Nine to Five. Ah. And also I wanted to. Uh, I just, you no, are going to run out of time. No, I know, I know, I know it's very serious, but in I just... Fact, no, you have run out of time. No. Thank you very much indeed. Thank you, thank you very much. Just wanted to do that.